Hello and welcome back to this video on the Seagate 24TB Ironwolf Pro hard drive. We've already done a big review on it, we did all of the testing and all of that like You can find it out in the other video linked in the description. But this video is to follow up to that one. At the end of that video, I asked you guys to let me know what exactly you wanted to know about this drive. What tests could we do and find out more about it. And thank you to a bunch of you for getting in touch. Because in this video, we're going to go through the following. We are going to do a RAID rebuild test. We're going to see just how long this drive would take to rebuild a raid array next we're gonna look at the noise of this drive it's not a quiet drive indeed i'm gonna have four of these drives running in a lovely little raid five and giving us some idea just how much noise they're going to make next we're going to talk about the compatibility we're going to put this drive inside a myriad of different NAS systems to see one if it's compatible and two how they react and finally we're going to talk about physical damage that's right so these drives themselves, they're mechanical. They've got little platters inside. All of that lovely little spin up inside. What does it take to damage this drive? We're not talking about turning this into this, but we're certainly talking about day-to-day -day riggers and the knocks and the bumps. Will this drive still work? So without further ado, let's crack on with part one where we go straight into the RAID rebuild. But just remember, whatever you're interested in, if any of those four points go to the bottom of the screen, the chapters will skip ahead to each of them. But let's crack on with that RAID rebuild. Measuring the RAID rebuild time on 24TB Seagate hard drives for NAS, there was never ever going to be a way that I could do this that pleases everyone. Everyone's going to have a different powered NAS, people are going to have different RAID arrays, they're going to have a different number of base. So I tried to split things down the middle as much as I could, regardless of brand and regardless of scale. So with that in mind, I went ahead uh, with a Synology 4 bay. I went with that simply because Synology is still arguably the most popular NAS brand uh, currently in the market. And I a 4-bay NAS is generally what the majority of uh, NAS users have these days. I went ahead and installed four of the drives inside. These are four Seagate 24TB drives, and I put it in a RAID 5 environment, avoiding a uh, Synology Hybrid Bay RAID. And likewise, I went for an EXT4 volume rather than BTRFS, as EXT4 is more widely available across different brands. Also, on top of that, I made sure within DSM to make sure that fast rebuild was disabled. This is a feature that Synology and a few other brands offer where when you do have a RAID degradation from a drive failing and then you introduce a new drive, the system will save a lot of time by only building the areas of data on the disks where data actually resided and null the rest out. This is something that's also available on ZFS platforms, not just on BTRFS. But unfortunately, because it's not available everywhere, I disabled it. Likewise, with the system, because it's impossible to gauge how much data any one person's going to have, I went ahead and made sure this entire our array is empty. Now there's going to be some of you that are going to immediately say that this isn't a fair test because a RAID array that doesn't have full or at least a high percentage of data is not going to give you the same RAID rebuild results. But a traditional methodical RAID rebuild, regardless of whether the system has data on it or not, will go by every single block and sector one by one and effectively give it a binary zero or one. So the amount of data that's on the system is largely immaterial at least in the confines of this test. But of course, once you scale up system, scale up power and scale up access to the system, that can make all of the difference. That said, I did go ahead and make sure that the RAID recent settings were set to high priority because I would argue that anyone that's utilising a large system with large drives like this during a RAID rebuild would have actioned it to be a RAID recent high priority. So I put that on there rather than the balanced mode in the middle. Now, once that was all set up with the RAID 5 completed and fully synchronised, I went ahead and physically removed a drive from the Synology system. I then put this inside a Windows PC USB dock and then formatted this with disk part cleaning the disk and removing any of the traces of the raid layer that was on the disk from Synology originally I then took the drive and reintroduced it into the Synology DS93 array and then from there actioned within DSM a raid rebuild now this happened uh, in the morning and I thought to myself maybe this will take most of a day and in the end the whole raid 5 rebuild in this setup here took a little over 30 and a half hours. It actually took uh, one day, six hours and 33 minutes to rebuild this four drive RAID 5 array using those Seagate 24TB Ironwolf Pro hard drives. 
Much like raid rebuild times, measuring the noise of these drives was always going to be difficult, once again because different people are going to have different raid arrays, different numbers of bays, different numbers of drives and different amounts of access on their system and the system itself will play its part. Larger, more you know, metallic industrial NAS enclosures are going to generate more ambient and vibration noise when in operation. So in order to kind of isolate these drives as best I could, I went ahead and uh, tried three different modes of use in the same D. S93 plus setup that we use for the raid rebuild testing. First thing I did was go ahead and measure the boot noise with four of these drives in that raid 5 environment. Next up, I measured the idle of these drives. That was when the system had completed its boot cycle, but the drives were not being actively accessed. They were periodically being pinged by the server, but nothing even approaching high access there. This is generally what you would have considered idle, and I left this for a few minutes. And finally, arguably the noisiest operation of all, I went ahead with high active system utility. Now with this, what I was utilizing there was uh, scrubbing the pool while simultaneously actioning benchmarks on each of the individual drives there. I could only action three at a time, but as you can see from the numbers on screen, the high active uh, noise level of this system did creep up. In the end, boot noise when the system had four of these drives in this rather modest plastic enclosure technology hit between 35 and 40 dB. During idle, it was 38 to 40 dB. And finally, during high active use, we saw numbers of between 48 and 52 decibels there with the system in operation. But just keep in mind that had this system been a larger, more metallic enclosure, these numbers probably would have been higher, and the ambient noise of this larger, more enterprise drive array uh, with higher spin-ups there and a more um, uh, enterprise-grade arm and actuator inside reading these discs all add up to a much noisier drive experience compared with that of non-enterprise and no non-pro drives sub 10 terabytes. When it came to the compatibility of the Seagate 24TB drives, as they're relatively new to the market, it would be forgiven for some NAS brands to not list it currently on their compatibility listings. We've already talked about Synology in the previous video and this one, and unfortunately Synology do still have a rather strict approach to their compatibility listings, and currently you can only go as high as 18 terabytes on listed compatible drives on the number of their systems, and indeed with the exception of their own Synology hard drives, third-party hard drives like this one, and particularly Pro Series drives, are very rarely on those lists. Nevertheless, as you've seen from multiple tests and the full review on this drive series, you know that this drive is both working within Synology's environment, and despite that, there is still unverified warnings and notifications throughout DSM if you try to use this drive in their systems. Now, I met a not dissimilar um, approach to this when installing this drive inside uh, a QNAP, inside a Terramaster, and inside a Ugreen NAS system. All three of them I went ahead and installed just a single drive inside respective desktop systems from all three brands. And in the case of all three, 
I was able to install the NAS operating system, be it QTS, be it Ugreen's UGOS or TerraMasters TOS, and in all occasions, the system did make a point of highlighting that I was utilising a drive that was on that was not featured on the compatibility lists of that brand. Again, this is a relatively new drive, so I'm prepared to give them just a little bit of the benefit of the doubt there when looking at all three brands. However. Acer Store was the only brand that I could find, at least among the main turnkey NAS solutions, that actually listed these 24 TB drives on their verified compatibility lists. I went ahead and installed one inside a Locker Store Gen 2, but nevertheless, I didn't need to really, because the drive already featured across multiple serial versions on their compatibility li compatible listed pages there. And unsurprisingly, within ADM, the drive worked fine and no notification were pre presented to me, the end user, when utilising this bulky drive inside their systems. So let's close out today's video talking about these drives and physical damage. Now obviously if I took a power drill and put a hole through this drive it wouldn't work. What we want to know is the knocks, riggers and bumps and jumps that can happen to these systems. Just how fragile is a drive like this? We've already talked about drive damage in the past of course but let me let you a little bit behind the curtain here at NAS Compares, and indeed I would argue about a lot of different review websites and review YouTube channels get comfortable. A lot of the time when it comes to the units that we get to review on these, a lot of the time we don't get to keep these. I won't get to keep these drives, I don't believe. I think they will have to go back. But in the time that I have them, I do a bunch of tests on them. I don't pay for these drives sometimes. Sometimes me and Eddie will go out of our way and buy the hardware for this channel. And other times we will contact the brand or the brand will contact us and they will send us some hardware on the agreement that we can talk about whatever we like. Hence the next part of this video that I'm pretty sure is going to piss someone off. So when these drives arrived with us we ordered four of these through Seagate and when they did arrive with us I'm going to be straight with you they did not arrive in great condition. These drives arrived with us incredibly poorly packed. I've worked in retail and I've worked in IT for a long time and I tell you right now I have not seen four drives of this caliber and this price delivered in the shape these were in. Wrapped in cardboard, um, wrapped in a cardboard box with just simple paper, these drives didn't stand a chance. And with the courier they were with, they were knocked and bumped and smashed around all you want. In the testing that I've done with these drives that you've seen in this video up to this point, and when you saw the hardware review before, one thing I didn't touch on till now is the fact that even though some of these drives, like this one you're seeing here on screen, are in very, very good condition, Unfortunately, not all of them arrived in that fashion. And one of these drives arrives with a whole lot of bumps, a whole lot of dents. The sort of thing where if I had bought this drive retail, I would have 100% sent it back. I would have immediately gone, this drive is But because we had the drives here, because we had the review lined up, and because these were the only samples available and it would have delayed the video a long time, we went ahead and tested those drives. But of course, before we utilized them, we put them through vigorous testing. And I'm pleased to say that despite the fact that the drive that I'm holding here has got dents all the way around it, and as you can see from the images that we showed earlier on, this drive had seriously been knocked around in transit for the better part of three days, that's right, it didn't even get delivered next day, throughout a courier system, the drive worked fine. It passed the smart testing. The sectors were fine. The drive had been in operation for, I believe, over 160 hours, still running fine there. I know 160 is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, and I do not recommend it, but I will say that this drive withstood what I would argue the kind of physical damage that I normally would have associated this drive would have arrived premium effed from the offset. Now, how long this drive will last in the future? I don't know. I don't know whether this drive's going to be on for one more out and die. But I will say, when it comes to rugged damage, that is a very, very good sign. Despite the fact I was absolutely livid when it arrived with me in that state, I've got to put my hands up and say, that was impressive to me, that this 24TB drive could be shipped to me in such an appalling way and arrive in such a dented condition, but still operate at full performance. 
And there you go, that was our video on the 24TB from Seagate in terms of raid rebuild time, noise, compatibility, and of course, physical damage. Do you wanna see another video on this series? Do let me know. But I think for now, we're gonna do a before you buy on this after a little while. I wanna make sure these drives are running for another few weeks uh, before we can really dig into that because I wanna see if this drive that's been kicked around a bit will continue to work. But nevertheless, I'm impressed that it's working given what we've discussed. If you wanna learn more about this, there's a written review link below that goes into a lot more detail and then we'll be updating it with a lot of the test results and information from this video in the next coming days apart from that there are links to it obviously if you want to go ahead to amazon or something or bnh or to get hold of this drive if you're going to go to those stores anyway there's links in the description which means that if you use those it costs you nothing extra but me and eddie here at nas compares is just us get a little kit back a little fee that allow us to keep doing what we do but apart from that thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this let me know how else you want to see me mess up drives and i'll see you next time